Hello everyone, this is Ryan Baxter, uh, developer advocate for uh, IBM Bluemix. Um, and last time I took you through a tutorial of the Bluemix UI and how you can use the UI and all the features that are part of the Bluemix UI. Um, but I did not take you through uh, creating an application and pushing the application uh, to, Bl to Bluemix. Um, so today I thought it would be a good idea to take you through a very simple scenario of, of creating an application uh, downloading the code to the application and uh, updating the application by pushing uh, changes to that app back to Bluemix and seeing those changes live. So to get started, I've already logged into Bluemix.net uh, with my account and I'm um, going to create an application. So um, I'm going to click the uh, Add an Application button here. And for this uh, demo, I'm just going to pick the Java Liberty Runtime and I want to create an application uh, for a Java app. So I'll click Create App, and um, let's give it a name, and we'll call it RJB Demo Java, and click Create. And now uh, Bluemix uh, will uh, stage the application and start the application up. Okay, so our application is now up and running, uh, so let's check it out. So we'll click the link here, and this will bring us to our application and all this really does uh, right now is uh, show us a bunch of environment variables. So um, let's go back uh, to Bluemix and uh, take a look at the code. So to do that we're going to click this icon here and go to view guide. Now the guide's going to tell us how to get started uh, uh, modifying the application, uploading it uh, back to Bluemix. Uh, the first step is to install the command line tool, the Cloud Foundry command line tool. I've already done that uh, in the interest of time, so we're not sitting here and downloading code or downloading applications and installing them. Um, but it's a very simple download and in, uh, install. The second step is to download the starter application package, which contains all the code for this application. So I'm going to click that link, and uh, I'll click Save to uh, save the zip file. And uh, now that the code is downloaded, Let's go take a look at it. So here's the zip file that was downloaded. Uh, I can uh, unzip this code and we can see that inside this folder there's the normal Java project layout. Uh, I want to uh, import this into my Eclipse environment. So here I have Eclipse uh, uh, in, uh, open and I have the uh, Java web tools installed so it allows me to uh, have all the functionality for working with Java web projects. Um, and what I want to do is go to File, New, and I'm going to select a d dynamic web project to create. Uh, I'm going to call this, uh, give the project name RJB Demo Java, just like we did in the Bluemix UI. Uh, and I'm going to point to a location, the location of the code that we just downloaded. So let me go to Downloads. And here's the code that we just downloaded and unzipped. And click open and then click finish. And that will now import the project into my Eclipse environment. So now I can work with the project and code within Eclipse. Uh, so let's take a look at the code. So here, uh, if we go to Java resources and source, we see that we have uh, a single file here, hello resources. And this is what is the servlet, which is returning um, the environment uh, variables that we saw. Uh, in the UI. Um, if we also uh, take a look here in the web content folder, we'll see there's some JavaScript, CSS, and HTML, which isn't uh, very interesting. Um, but uh, under the webinf and lib folder, we can see what libraries are being used. So Wink is being used as a way of uh, parsing uh, JSON into uh, Java objects, and then there's the JSR uh, library, which is being used to uh, simplify our servlet definitions. Um, in the web XML, we can see that all our servlets are uh, being served up under the uh, URL pattern slash API. Um, so that's all useful information to know. So let's create a new servlet um, that we can uh, 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 demo something with and then, and then push that code back up to Bluemix. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my source code. I'm going to right click and say new class and we'll call it counter. So what our servlet is going to do is count the number of times that uh, a GET request is being made to our servlet. Uh, so very simple uh, 
piece of code. So we're going to create a private static int uh, counter and uh, we're going to set it to zero and then we're going to create one method called get counter and it's going to return a string and in the body of this uh, method what we're going to do is increment counter and then return uh, this servlet was called insert our counter variable and times. So what this will do is print out uh, the string that this server was called um, whatever the value of counter is times and every time uh, this method gets called it will in increment counter by one. Uh, so we need to add some annotations here to make it uh, servlet so that JSR code knows what to do. We need to add a path annotation here and this is the path to our servlet. Uh, and we'll say it is uh, the path is slash counter. And we also need to annotate this method and say it's going to be a get method so that it will respond when get requests are, are made to this uh, servlet. So that we have our class created. Uh, the last thing we need to do is go into this resources file. And this resources file uh, is telling the JSR code where all our servlet classes are. So we just need to add our new class to this file, and the class name is counter, so we'll just enter that and save that. So now we've added our code, we add our servlet, our serv we know what our servlet does, we now need to build the code and deploy the war back to Bluemix. So how do we do that? Well, um, part of the project code that was downloaded is this ant script, and this ant script uh, will uh, build the code and package it all up into a war file. So that's pretty convenient. So we can run that right from Eclipse. So to prove that we're doing that, we're going to delete the current WAR file that's here. You don't have to do this, but it's, it makes it easier to understand that the build is happening. Um, and we'll right click on the ant scripts and go to uh, run as ant build. And you can choose the default uh, build target and click run. And that uh, will take a, just about a second to run. And we can see that there is a WAR file that was built here. And now if we refresh our project, we'll see the WAR file uh, is now back again. So now we need to push this WAR file to Bluemix. So how do we do that? Okay, so as I mentioned before, we already have our uh, Cloud Foundry command line tool installed. And um, we've, uh, we have now have, should now have access to our, uh, the CF command. So if we do CF-help, that should print out a list of help for the command line tool. So that means it's working. So um, the first thing we need to do is uh, to, um, to log in to uh, Bluemix from the command line tool. So we'll do cf login dash a and uh, pass the URL uh, to Bluemix uh, to log in, which is api.bluemix.ng.bluemix.net. Oh, API it's going to ask us for our username, so enter your Bluemix username which is your IBM ID and your password. And then it's going to ask you to select a space. So I'm going to select my demo space. Most people probably only have uh, one space here that they have to select from. And they may have more if they added some, but select a space that you want to use. OK, so we're all logged in. Uh, now we want to push our app. So we need to uh, CD uh, into the directory uh, where the WAR file is. So we'll cd into, uh, in my case, it's in downloads and slash uh, RGB demo Java. And uh, you can see that we now have the WAR file here. So let's do a CF push, and this will push the code. We need to enter the name of the application um, that we want to push the code to. And this is the name that we um, used when we created the application, so which is RJB Demo Java. And uh, let's we want to push the WAR file. So um, after we uh, enter the WAR file name, we can press Enter, and this will now push the code uh, to Bluemix. Okay, the code has now been pushed to Bluemix. We can see that the app has started, and uh, so let's go check it out. So here's the URL 
uh, to our application. So let's copy that, head back to Firefox, open a new tab here, and go to the application. So we want to go to our new endpoint, which was, which was at uh, API slash counter. And here we go. This is what we were printing out. So this is the servlet. The servlet was called one time. And as I refresh the page, we can see that, um, that the increment goes up. So what were we able to accomplish? Well, we were able to go to the Bluemix UI, create an application, download the source code for that application, modify the code a little bit, uh, build the application, uh, build the new WAR, push that WAR back up to Bluemix and see the changes live running in Bluemix uh, in a very short period of time. But we did break one of the golden rules of writing cloud applications when we wrote that code for the counter servlet. And I'm not going to tell you what that golden rule was today, but next time in our next video we'll fix the problem and show you a little bit more of the features of Bluemix. So stay tuned. Thanks.